And so I'm delighted. I also want to say, I said it last night, I've preached every night. And my elder was concerned that people will think that he has spoken in my ears. And I wanted to say we had no such conversation concerning the machinations of the things that are going on in this church. I just spoke as the Lord gave utterance. So please relieve him of any responsibility that um, you may think he has for the preaching. Could we just look at Proverbs, the 25th chapter, the second verse? And all I ask you to allow me to be myself. As I said last week, I'm a Caribbean man. And the rhythm in my soul has come from here. So if there's anybody to take blame, blame yourself. I'm the son of a man who came from Africa and was just placed in the Caribbean. And here we are. Let me bring you greetings from the Caribbean. We love you. We live and surrounded by water. And hence the reason why probably I enjoy the fish so much. Because we eat so much of it. This is God's house, you know, when we come. We just need to just have a good time. Sometimes the, the, the job is so tough. The things that we are dealing with is so tough. So when we come in God's house on the Sabbath, it's just to enjoy, amen? And you know, when, we, when, when you come to church, and you, you come because God has filled you. You, you. you come because you have been spending time with him. So you come not so much to be entertained, but be, to be a blessing to somebody. You must come already charged with the Holy Spirit so that just the person next to you is just blessed by sitting next to you. You know what I mean? It's just, just blessed just because you are next to me. I, I, I have told you that we are the temple of God. Do you, do you realize what responsibility? You are the temple of God. Therefore, he dwells within you. So if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Mm? If you sit next to me, you're sitting next to God. Mm? Do, do you realize who you are? Even though people may say what, you are God's child. You are God on earth. Amen? Proverbs, could you put it on the screen, please? Proverbs 25, verse 2. Proverbs. There is a foundation I like to lay when I'm preaching certain messages. Because some messages are difficult to preach. And I want to begin by telling this church, a preacher, when he approached the lectern to preach, has a very difficult task because he has to fit in words. He has to fit in words a gospel and a God that is infinite. A God that is bigger than words. A God that cannot be fit in church. Or even the world. And so the task of translating a big God into words. And then for you to understand. It is a task that you should always pray for the preacher. Always pray for the preacher. This particular preacher also knows that. In the world that surround us. There is about 20 million bits per second. That bombards our senses. And we cannot filter and utilize so much information. So God has built us with a mechanism, for example, like our subconscious. Because if we were conscious of everything, our breathing, our hunger, our sweating, we would not have time for cognitive thinking. And so, so much of what we do happens in our subconscious. And because there was so much information thrown at us per second, and we can only deal with about 134,000 bits per second, when a person listens, he's listening with a filter. A filter of his tradition, of his, a filter with his past experience, a filter of his language. And so a preacher has a difficult task because I have the task of penetrating things because some of you may be pre prefer a tall preacher. And so from the time you begin to listen, you have prejudice. 
And, 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 and so those are the filters and, and, and sometimes the accent and all this manner of thing. So when you're listening to a sermon, you must pray for the man. Because it's not about the man so much, about a God who allows the spirit to talk to you. So as you're listening, tell the Lord, it's not my brother or my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And the day of Pentecost, he said that all men heard. And while we say it was the gift of tongues, I believe it was the gift of hearing. Because God has the ability to make every man hear to fit the specificity of a situation. You can preach one message and everybody hears it different. That is what I want you to, 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 to ask God for. So that the Lord will send rhema word, not just logos, but rhema to fit and cut a word to suit your situation so that when you begin to shake and say amen, the person next to you can be angry, but it's not about them, it's about God. Amen. Let me make a second announcement that God is the chief executive officer of this church and he's here right now and he's about to preside over our embassy business. We are about to conduct diplomatic affairs. This is preaching time in the kingdom of God. So we need to ask Jesus to send secret service agents to arrest and evict every demon <laughs> that tends to inhibit the preaching of the word. And so Proverbs, the 25th chapter says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search out that matter. Let me read it in the Hebrew. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. The Hebrew word for conceal is satah. It, it, it's a word with a twist. It means to say that God is hiding something, satah, from which you get Esther, and hence the reason why Esther or Nista was hidden in Artaxerxes' kingdom for such a time like this. Jesus is saying through Proverbs that is the glory of God to conceal. He hides. God is a hiding God. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's the glory of God. To conceal, he hides. That word conceal means he hide with a view to reveal for those who will dig beyond the surface. Are you with me, church? He hides so that those who will go to dig beyond the surface will find a, a, a nugget of gold, a gold, the treasure of the scripture. Hence the reason why the Bible calls this word a treasure. Treasures are not found on the surface of the earth and those that will read superficially and casually. Treasure is found that those who will take time and switch off those movies and will spend time with God in order to find the treasure. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. The Hebrew word for thing is the bar, and that the bar means word. In other words, the text will read, it's the glory of God to hide a word. Now watch me. I've said it this week, but some of you were not here, so it's worth repeating. When God spoke, let there be light. It said, let there be light, 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 light. In other words, the word that comes from his mouth create the thing that he wants. So the word and a thing in the Hebrew language are the same. Because when God speaks, the reason why God cannot lie, because whatever he says becomes what he says. So, so, so even though if you're watching a green cloth and God says it's white, it
language to the next language, you lose information. Am I correct? That is why sometimes I notice you and I'm amazed by you because, you know, we hardly speak so many languages. I'm amazed by you because some of you, I hear you speaking English, then you switch to Swahili. Then you go to your, your, your mother tongue and back and forth, you're just talking back and forth and you, you are just there, you know, and, and I'm amazed. And, and, and when I ask, just, just watch me, just, 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 just. When I ask, why do you as Kenyans speak that way? They say, some things are said sweeter in your mother tongue. So you're saying it in Swahili, but then you need to give it a kind of oomph, a kind of uh, a, a rhythm. So you have to switch. If you are Kisi, you speak that. If you are Luo, you speak. And, and, and it tends to suggest the multifacetedness of God. He, he, he is so wise. In fact, Paul said the manifold wisdom of God. It's like a skirt that has many folds. The manifold, he's just too big to fit in one thing so you have given his church a multiplicity of colors gifts and talents different people with language so that we could all come with the unity because unity in scripture don't mean sameness it just means a confluence of different paths working together with a thought to serve our god are you with me church i'm a, i'm just building it's a glory of god to 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 it's a glory of god to 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 conceal a thing but it's an honor to search out that thing. So when you are translating, you lose information. So some of us read the King Jim Version thinking it is the exact word that came from God's mouth. Once you translate, you lose information. Now, 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 watch me. Just imagine now that God is infinite. God is infinite. It means that he's not finished. I need for you to get that as I lay the foundation. God is not finished. It means to say that at no one time could you think that you have embraced God. You know, some people believe because I have a PhD in this and because I have a professorship. And that, 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 that. God is infinite. It means that God has no borders. Definite or defined means there are circumscribed borders. This has a border and because it has a border it can be defined but how do you describe a god that has no border he's borderless you could only describe things with finity and border are you with me churches so 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 that god has a problem of explaining himself because he's beyond grasp paul who was great paul who wrote most of the theological thoughts that belong to the epistles paul who was a great orator and preacher paul who was beaten in Lystra. paul paul said i i I, 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 to know him who is unknowable, and I keep pressing to find him. Paul, who was so bright and had more PhD than more theologian, found himself saying, I know him part. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, who, who was so great, was expressing he know in part. Are you sick with me, church? Are you with me? Just follow the preacher. Let me just preach this word. Just follow the preacher. Paul, he, he, he said, I know in part. So if, 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 if you were to distill, if you were to distill all the doctors in this room, and by the way, I think I see a friend of mine that we, we did a lot of work together when I was in Ikorongo, 16 years ago. Any kiss in the house? Ikorongo. And I think I glimpsed him, Dr. Isaac Nayakundi. We did a lot of work in uh, Manchester South Church in England. I just glimpsed you there. I had to say that. You know, he's a good man. Um, <laughs> he's my brother. Now, where was I? <laughs> We're just talking, you know. You just don't put too much pressure on the preacher. Hmm? It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. So, 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 where did I say what you said? You know, sometimes you lost your place, but you never get nervous. You keep repeating what you said before and you remember your place. It's the glory of God to conceal. So God has a, God has a difficulty of, of explaining himself because he's beyond. You see, when you say, when you say, watch me, watch me. When you say somebody is tall, they are tall in comparison to something. You, you see, you, you may say, 
You may say Elder Abur is tall, but he's tall relative to what? He's not tall relative to this church. If you say something is big, this church is big, Bell, relative to what? If you put it in a stadium, it's small. So, so when, you, when you make comparisons and you, you talk like that, relative to what? But, but how do you describe God? What is he related to? He, say, he said in his word, who do you compare me with? In fact, David, David, David got beside himself. And David went from one extreme to another. And he had to say from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Because God is too big to be great grasp he's he's infinite so if you were to distill all the medical doctors that is where i was <laughs> if you if you were if you were to distill all the medical doctors in this room and in nairobi and around the world into one single doctor and you reduce all the specialties and subspecialty into one man he will still look at the human body and say i know in part if you were to take all the theologians in it and New Testament theology and Old Testament theology, professors of Hebrew, professors of Greek, and all these things, those who specialize in book, and you were to distill them as one single theologian, as big as his brain may be, he will still have to look at the scripture and say, I know in part. And if you know in part, you don't approach the word of God because of an infinity with an attitude that I just know this thing. Because God is infinite and he hides a word within his word. Are you with me? I'm transitioning. Just bear with the preach. And so God has this difficulty. So what he does, what he does, watch me. Because he's so big, he can't be fit in words. So that which we see there is just a minute explanation of how big he is. So, 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 so once you understand that, you understand the difficulties. So, so, just, so what he does he uses things that we see to explain things that cannot be seen. To explain the Holy Spirit, he said the Holy Spirit is like a dove. He has to use something that you see to explain something you cannot see or cannot understand. Are you with me, church? I, I want you. So God gave us human experience. So for example, when you travel, when you travel and you you, you begin to, after two weeks or so, especially those of us who travel often, you, you, once you travel, within a week or so, you begin to miss your family. Isn't that so? Or you want to go back home. The reason why God gave that experience for us to understand what it is to feel homesick for heaven. In other words, to understand spiritual things, he has to give physical things. So the, the, all the, even the interaction between a man and his wife and stuff like that is a physical explanation of a greater thing that we will find with God. But I'll talk about that tomorrow Sunday morning when we go in the back. So he gives physical, even, even sleep as we sleep and snore and get unconscious. God wants us to have an idea what death is. So he gives us a little experience on this side for us to experience spiritual things. Now, are you with me, church? I've set the foundation. And therefore, God hides a word within the word. And I want to be use a character. And preach from Genesis 45 to explain how God hides within, how he, how he hides himself. And sometimes when he hides himself, he can find himself being misunderstood. And I want to use Joseph. Just bear with me. Let me use Joseph. I know you're familiar with this story, but let me just talk about Joseph. Yesterday, I was preaching and I was telling you, every man or woman of God that he has ever called, he calls you and he gives you a promise. See, God will tell you, listen, I will give you this and give you that. And you will see the destination, but what God is interested in is the journey. Some of the people like to know where you are now, but they don't know how did you really get there. 
God will watch you and wake you up and promise you great things and then tell you, now walk out the journey so that you can achieve in your experience what I promise you. And never allow what you're experiencing now to discourage you from what God has said to you because God's word is sure and whatsoever it says, it will accomplish it. Even though it may seem difficult, God will accomplish what he says. And so every man, whether he's called David, when he calls you, he calls you. And then after you're called, you're often rejected by your brethren. And so David was called. He was rejected by his brothers. Jesus was called. He was first rejected by his brothers. Moses was called. He was rejected by his own people. And when he, Moses went back the second time, he was accepted the second time. When David went back again, he was accepted. When Jesus comes the second time, he will be accepted. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Joseph was rejected by his brothers because of his dream. Rejection, rejection is part of the walk with God. It is time people who are called of God know that rejection is part of the exercise and not just being rejected by people on the job, but rejected by your colleagues and your brethren. Learn to understand that rejection is part of the process. When you understand that, you don't get discouraged, young people. When people say, when you go and apply for the job and you send your qualifications and they reject you, don't see that rejection as an ultimatum or an ultimate destiny for you. Know that rejection is part of the process. And after you have been rejected, God often sends you in the wilderness. I talked about that last night, but I'm laying the foundation. After you are rejected by your brother Moses, he will send you in a wilderness. After you are rejected by your brother David, he will send you in a wilderness because God incubates greatness in a wilderness. You will often find your character development in a lonely place. Learn to avoid crowds. The, the greatest divorce we can get from people is from people's opinion. Too many people are handcuffed in, in, in people's opinion. And, and, and as I always say, there will always be some say in your life. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're Isaiah. Some say, some say, some say. Too many church people are just hooked on some says. We must come to church knowing who God say you are. Because whatever he says you are, you will become what he says. And it doesn't matter. And I said to you last night, and it's worth repeating, when he saw Peter, he said, Thou art, but thou shall be. Thou art, and thou shall be. Most people in church, and most of your colleagues, even most of your siblings, they know who you are. But what they don't know is what what you shall be and you must know that you have a word inside of you that know what you will be are you with me church so joseph 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 was promised a lot of things and i thank god for the sermon so i don't have to repeat a lot of things joseph was promised greatness and he said he said he said when when he got his dream Oh, look, my beautiful sister here. She has been here every night. When I see her, I get strength. If I watch you and preach, I can preach good. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Because she has been there. She nods, you know. Some people nod in sleep, but she nods with affirmation. You know, I see, I see some of you ready to sleep already. Did you eat ugali this morning? You don't eat brown ugali before you come for preaching. <laughs> After you do, you do that, yeah? So, so, so. <laughs> I always slip. But why do I go off on these rabbit trails? Where was I? <laughs> Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Just keep repeating. When you forget, let me teach some young people who want to be public speakers. Anytime you forget, don't get panicked. Don't, you, you, will, you will not remember if you panic. Just keep repeating what you chose. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Joseph. Just, that's a technique I use. When I'm saying, watch this, watch this, I'm trying to remember. Honor, honor, honor. I try to forget. <laughs> Joseph had dreams and the dreams of greatness. And, and when he articulated his dream to his, his father and mother, they say, Shall the sun and the moon bow down to you? And, and when he said sun, he was speaking about himself, Jacob. And when he said moon, he was speaking about him, his, 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 his Joseph's mother, knowing that even Jacob understood the role of women and men. He was the sun, he's the source of your light. 
<laughs> now, 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 let me say this. This, 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 is, this is in the original. This is in Hebrew now. Jacob says, with the moon and the stars bow down to you. He was talking about the mother and the father. It means to say, a man in his house is like the sun. You need to shine a light on your wife. <laughs> you need to be the light in the house. You say, should they bow down to me? And the Bible lets us know that Jacob made for him a coat of many colors. That word in the Hebrew is, is, is keponet pasim. It doesn't mean a coat with yellow, red, and blue, and all these colors. It was a long sleeve tunic, a coat that was made for those in authority. Kings, sons, and children used to wear that coat. And because Reuben, now follow me, because Reuben, 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 who was the firstborn, who should have been the one who was really wearing the coat of many colors? Reuben was the firstborn. But I told you last night, God has a tendency of bypassing those who normally should deserve promotion and chose those who are the last in line. Because the scripture says, the first shall be last and Oh God, let me talk to this side. And, and so if you come to church this morning thinking that you are last, God has a tendency uh, to bring you from the, 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 the background to the forefront. You just stay where you are and God is able to give you a skip. And when God gives you a skip in the kingdom, it's a real skip. You know God will bring you with your dumb self, with your stupid self. That is what people think. And when God sits you in a place in church and solidifies you in your position. No weapon formed against you is able to prosper. When God settles you down and you are not appointed by man but chosen by God, you know, you know, Ellen White says it this way that Jesus was not enumerated and drunken by the appraisal of men nor their throngs. He knew what was his purpose. Church, may I make my second announcement. Know who you are, know your, your purpose, and you just keep on walking. You just keep on walking. Let them talk. Let the enemies plot. But once God is with you, Joseph had the coat of many colors. <laughs> because Reuben, watch me, watch me, men. I will talk about this tomorrow too. Men, watch me, watch me. Reuben was the firstborn and he should have gotten the birthright. But when Jacob was given blessing, he said, look at you. You slept with your father's wife. You went up to her bed. Many a man, you lose your birthright and you lose your blessing by going and sleep with the wrong person. But that's a message for a different time. There are so many men that are ordinary, have great talents and gifts, but because you are sleeping around, you miss your blessing. Don't <laughs> be careful who you lie with. Because whoever you lie with, you become drawing to. And the more perverted it is, the more problem. It's the greatest thing to suck your blessing. He said, because you went up to a father's wife, you will never amount to anything. No king came out of Reuben. No priest came out of, of, of Reuben. He was almost like nothing because he went on his father's bed. Disrespectful. Sexual sin is a serious problem in our church. It's a serious problem that is debilitating people. But, 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 but say anything. Oh, shh, you can't say no sin. It's, it's a problem, yes, but, but you know, in Africa, there's a lot, not like in my country, there are no ostriches except one in the zoo. But here, there's a lot of ostriches. Even when I'm driving, you can see them in the park. Push your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist and it don't exist. Reuben slept, lost his birthright. So now, Joseph was the one. And so when, jo watch me, watch me, watch me. When Joseph went and reported to Jacob, and I know you have heard of all from theologians, that is because Jacob loved that son. You have to read it differently because he was the one. It is not that Joseph was coming and give bad report. He was the one. The text reads like this, and Jake, Joseph was 17 years, watch me, and he was tending his brothers and the flock. In other words, he was in charge. And because he was in charge, he was the one despised. <laughs> and they thought, well, let me take the coat of many colors. Because a lot of people think if they can take your outward exterior of power, they can take your real power. But real power comes from within. 
and emanates from without. So they thought by taking his clothes, you can take my power. Watch, 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 watch. They thought by just taking your clothes. I tell people, you can take my money, you can take my house, you can take my things. Let them have it. But you can't take the anointing. Hear me. I want to make this point. Hear me, church. Watch me. Too many people seek for public power and have private failures. You must seek to have internal strength. That is why the Bible says, when you look at Jesus, there was no form, no comeliness that you will desire him. He had no external he commendation to men. He looked like an ordinary man, but he had so much power. It come like Samson, who represents Jesus. When, the, when Delilah asked Samson, what is the secret of your strength? It's not that Samson was like Hulk. We think that Samson was like Hulk walking around with big triceps and biceps and chest and all. No, no, no. It's because Samson was a very small, thin man. That is why she could have asked him, what's the secret of your strength? Because if it was big, it would have been natural. What God does, he hides a treasure in an earthen vessel so the excellency will be of God and not of us. Men will look at you and think you are nobody, but when they see the internal power, there are too many swellings in church. You know when you have inflammation in your, when you are sick and you have inflammation, there is swelling and pus. And sometimes even we elders, because I'm an elder, an ordained elder, we elders and ministers, we see swelling in people and think it is health when it's just pus. Hmm? It puffed up. It's swelling. Men looking big. But if you just put a little poke in it, you see all those smelly things. That is why even David, the eighth son of Jesse, was in the backside of the desert. Didn't look so important. In fact, watch me, watch me. David did even didn't, wasn't trained in temple etiquette. He didn't know how to eat a knife and fork. He just used to take his ogali like some of you and roll it in your hand like this. That is, he didn't, he didn't have temple etiquette at all. But, but, but even though the, eight, the brothers had that, when, when he used his gift, his, his, little, his, little, his little sling and his little stone, and when he used his gift, the doors of the temple were opened up to him. And he sat on the soul table and ate his food. Because when you have inner strength, it will come on the outside. Let me use this illustration. Can I just preach how I want to? Just, when I was doing ultrasound, when I was training to do ultrasound in Florida Hospital Hall, College of Health Science, I will never forget that one day I was called to do an ultrasound. I was a training student on a, a lady. She was five months pregnant. She had a big tummy. She had the, the mask on her face. You know, women suffer. You know, when as your belly grow, you have the itching on your stomach. You, you know, you remember when you were scratching for that child? Women go through so much to bear us. We must respect and honor our mothers. Could we say amen for mothers? They are so wonderful. And so, and so this woman came to me and they had written a, a request from the doctor. So I was watching the card. You watch when she missed a cycle. You watch these things. You put on the table. But she was undergoing what you call medical tourism. You know, when you come to the States, those people from, you know, they come from far and they just land in the States to, to make their babies so that they could have a child born in, born in the U.S. Well, of course, it didn't have Trump at that time. <laughs> And by the way, you must not fear him because this Trump is the, is the first Trump. But my Bible tells me there will be a last, <laughs> there will be a last Trump. You didn't get it. Let me say, there will be you. Some of you frightened about. So she, she came. She came. She came. Yes, yes. <laughs> she 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 came. And so I put the transducer on her tummy, and I put the gel. You know that gel, and I begin to 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 to, to scan to see what I'm seeing if I'm seeing any baby. And I scanned for half an hour, and I couldn't see anything. And then I went to the radiologist, and I said, Doc. I've been scanning this woman for a long time, and she has nothing. I don't know. So he came. He came. Scan, scan, nothing. And then he called me on the other side. He said, Duncan, this is pseudo-pregnancy. False pregnancy. You look like 
You song like, you taste like, you sing like, Sabbath school like, 27 doctrine like, but no pregnancy inside of you. That woman was devastated. The worst situation, you can, f wait a minute preacher, the church is called a woman, the church is called a bride, that she receive a seed from a God. And if you have a false pregnancy, you look swollen. Mm? You look like the most disastrous situation to find yourself in is that you have all the trimmings. Hmm? Oh, look at my belly. I'm so pregnant. And when they look, nothing. It's the most dis that was like the great disappointment for that woman because you know, when you're looking for a child, some of you know what I'm talking about, testing with the thermometer, watching your temperature, looking for the timing, and then you find nothing. Some of us will come up to the day when he appears and find there's no pregnancy. The church has gotten too much like Onan. You want pleasure and stimulation, but you don't want to impart. People need a seed from God, not just things. And you come to sing in the choir, and a man come to preach from the U.S., and all these programs we have. And then when we have finished all these programs, I still have a problem in my marriage. I still have so much problem in church. I'm losing my teenager, and yet we are comfortable. But I have come from Trinidad and Tobago to tell somebody, I am tired of church as usual. I want to see power. I want to see the power of God walking in the eyes of church and people will be raised up even from the dead and God will bring attention to this church because the power of God is in it. I'm tired of swelling with pus. We need a physician to come in here and drain all that stuff. And even him will be in jeopardy in some places because while you're draining pus, people want to kill you. <clears throat> Are you with me, church? I'm just... Having some fun. You'll get to go just now. Just bear with me. So Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Inner strength. Watch me. He had so much power inside of him when he was the jealousy of his brothers. They took his coat and they threw him in a pit. Now, I'm not going to exegete too much of that because many preachers preach about that. But it's just to say that Hebrew word is, is bore. It suggests that that pit that he was thrown in is similar to a grave because when Jesus spoke to the men at Emmaus, he says that, that, that Moses spoke of me. It means every single thing in the scripture is about Jesus. And, and so Joseph, which being been thrown in a pit, and it says that the pit had no water because in a Hebrew culture, water represents life. In other words, Jesus, Joseph, was going down in the grave. Now I know that because when you study the text, right after they threw Joseph in the pit, the Bible tells us Ishmaelites, uh, people were coming and they had myrrh and certain things, spices. Well, we know that when you see myrrh and those spices is because that is what was used to embalm the dead. And so the imagery, Jesus is beginning to draw a picture of himself, even in Genesis with Joseph, because there is a word within the word. And if you look for it carefully, you will see signs of Jesus speaking about himself. So Joseph was cast into the pit. Now, are you with me, church? And last night I told you, you often have to go down first before you come up. Enjoy your going down because in your going down, you will have the ability to bear the weight. <laughs> watch me, watch me. Are you still with me? You know what, what Paul called it? He said, it's the weight of glory. <laughs> the, way, the Hebrew word is kavod. It's a word from where you get the liver. The liver is huge. In other words, God's glory has a weight. And when it's the same word that you get honor your parents from. Because honor and glory is very similar. Because when something is heavy, you cannot move it like you want. The other night, I begged the elders to move this. I see four of them struggling. They were struggling with this, this little thing here. The reason why it has weight. In other words, things of weight you can't handle. So when handle like you want. So when the Bible says, honor your parents, it means you don't handle them anyhow. You have to treat them with a kind of respect. Joseph. Joseph. Cast down in the pit. Representing this Christ. And right after the Ishmaelites came with more. Watch me. Watch me. I'm going somewhere. Just follow this preacher. Then of course, 
you know the story with Judah and how Judah behaved. Judah says, sell this man for profit. Judah liked to make money. But I don't want to pontificate on that. I want to move on. Hear me, God. So he goes to Potiphar's house. Now watch. And the Bible says, everything he did was blessed. He wasn't complaining about his slavery. He wasn't complaining about the job he has in Naivas or Tusky or this and no, 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 no. Because when you are a child of God, wherever God place you, it's to be a blessing to where you are. And the Bible says, and God was with Joseph. All you need, let me make an announcement to this side. See if you can sign language this well. You and God are a majority. I need to say that again. You and God are a majority. Too much of us like people and people. And because we live in a democracy where everybody wants to have a vote, we think that is the kingdom. No, no, no. God's kingdom is a theocracy. In other words, God will step with his auspicious glory and said, yes, Gideon, even though you are trembling in a trestling floor, I am saying to you, you are a mighty man of valor. So it doesn't mean what church members, and I want to say this again, I want to thank God that he don't call no church board to ask permission to bless me. God will step out of his own auspicious glory and say, you, 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 I will bless you. Mm? So some of us are so fearful, and you, ah, when God is with you, anything you touch, Ellen White expressed it this way, and hear me. She said, Joseph, and the way I remember it is ice. He worked with integrity. Ice, I-C-E. He worked with integrity. He worked with care, and he worked with energy. Ice. In other words, he was not complaining. Some of you, watch me, watch me, watch me. Because you vex with the boss and he's paying you so little, you go on to the man's job to sabotage his work. You are on the internet, Instagram, Facebook. That is why you're not being blessed. If you can be faithful in another man's thing, God will make you and he will bless you. And God will often, for you to be great, God will often put you first where you could demonstrate fidelity in a man's thing. I said to you the other night, was Jesus Christ was once a faceless man in John's crowd. John was preaching all the sermon. John was in Judea. John was attracting everybody. And Jesus was just looking until one day John said, behold. You must be willing to be in a man's crowd and give him an applause. You know, especially some of us as preachers, preach. Oh God, let me be careful how I say this. I have to be diplomatic here now you know some of us preachers we're so bright we cannot even appreciate another preacher you, you know what I mean? some singers can't appreciate another but you must be willing to applaud another gift because if you light a man's candle it doesn't diminish your light you you when you don't compare yourself you are unique I am you there is no other Roger Duncan in this world I am the president of my own fan club I don't need nobody to like me. I am the president of my fan club. If on my birthday you never tell me anything, I will bake a cake and blow my own candle out and sing happy birthday to myself. Because I'm self-assured in Jesus. Are you with me? So Joseph, Joseph, let me speed up with this message. Joseph, hear me church. Just, just follow me. Most of you took time and welcome and tithes and stuff. Let the preacher take his time and preach this word. Mm. So, so, so Joseph... Joseph now is in Potiphar's house and he blessed now watch me every time God is blessing you now women close your ears I want to talk to men every time God is about to give you an elevation in the kingdom here comes Patsy Potiphar yes I said it I said it Patsy Potiphar there is always anytime you're about to be elevated here comes Delilah Patsy Potiphar she watched that <laughs> she watched at his, his chest and then, you know, when, he, when he's shining and some of you who are theologians in the crowd, uh, don't, don't fault me for eisegesis, but you could use your uh, imagination. And, you know, when he's cleaning the chariots of fear or, or, or potty for, you know, and you see the, 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 <laughs> the division of the man, triceps and biceps, she, she watched. 
touch that man. And, and she, she said, but Potiphar is a king and he's a big man and he's a ruler, but look at that Joseph. <laughs> look at the Joseph. But, but let me tell you what I've discovered as a preacher. And for those of you men to know, the anointing on your life, the power of God in your life is very attractive to females. <laughs> I, I can tell you because women supported Jesus' ministry even more than men. In terms of supporting it, women are, 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 are drawn to an anointing. So sometimes they are not in love with you and you think they, oh God, let me talk to this side because I want to, and, and sometimes even you women, you think you're in love with a man. What you're seeing is the, the attractiveness of the power that comes from a man of God. Joseph, as he was cleaning, and he, she thought to herself, she said, would you lie with me? <laughs> lie with me. And you know the story. I don't have time. I wish I could have just preached on his clothes alone because the clothes start from Genesis and it continues from Revelation. But his clothes, his coat, he left his cloth, his cloth in her hands. Now watch me, watch me, watch me. Women now, men, close your ears. I'm talking to the woman. If, watch me, watch me, watch me. If a woman were to come to you with a piece of garments from your husband, and she wave it in front of you. And you see, look the evidence. Exhibit one. Your honor, I want to submit this evidence. This is his vest. It smell with the cologne, 212 men, that I bought him. And I know this vest. Yet, even though Potiphar's wife had evidence, it was not the true thing. What I'm trying to say, be careful how you judge your men. Let me say, be careful because you see me talking on the phone or you see me. I, 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 I know some, some, some people. This don't happen in Nairobi, but it happens home where, you know, the woman, he, the man come home late and he, he left his phone there and you're watching that phone. <laughs> yeah, you, you're watching that phone. Snatch it. But you have been watching the password, how he's <laughs> you have been watching how his fingers going over time. <laughs> he, yeah, you have watching how that finger going over time, and now you know it's zero zero one is his password. You can't wait to get your hand on that. <laughs> but it doesn't happen here, but in Trinidad it happens all the time. <laughs> so I'm just sharing with you what happens home, and you caught that guy. You see a conversation and you take it and say, Ah, catch him today. I I had a mind something was going on. Joseph got now watch. So so of course you know then he was put in the, the the prison. Now now there's a lot of things here but I don't want to say it. So 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 I'll leave that out. He was put in prison. But watch me, watch me, watch me. In the prison he met a bottle and a baker. Huh? He met a bottler. And if I was preaching on communion, I would spend a lot of time with a bottler of wine and, and, and a baker bread. And the reason why wine represents the Holy Spirit, some of you who do physics know that the law of entropy suggests that, that everything degenerates over time. But wine is the only thing that gets good with age and so he used wine to represent the spirit because the more and more you get the spirit is the better it comes the more and more the longer i serve him and so but but this is not communion the bread and right the butler and the baker was in the prison and again in the prison joseph gets favor because everywhere he goes everywhere he goes i watch him everywhere he goes he's blessing even in the prison He's a blessing. So now he has sight. Now the, the butler and the baker has a dream. And interpreting the dream, when Joseph interpreted the dream, he said one head would be lifted up and one head will be lifted off. Watch. After three days. There's a lot of things in that. You preachers in the crowd, take it and go. But, but, but the point I want to make, the butler and the baker, and when Joseph interpreted the dream, he said in three days, Pharaoh, Pharaoh throw a party and he restored the cupbearer, and he killed the one with the bread. Hmm? You know the story. And he said, Joseph said, some theologians suggest here is where Joseph sinned. Here is where he distrusts because he said, remember me. But, but, but wait, wait a minute, watch me church. He's saying the innocent is saying to the guilty, remember me. But let me fast forward. When Jesus was on the cross, there were two men, the scriptures say, they were riling Jesus. 
They were riling Jesus, one on his right hand, one on his left. One was taken and one was left. One head was lifted up and one head was cut off. And then White says it this way, when Jesus was on the cross, he could not see beyond the portals of the grave. But when he saw the thief on his right side, which represents the sanctuary message, that angels that lit up with approval, when he saw that man say, remember me? He said, yes, I know my sacrifice has been accepted. Are you with me, church? So Joseph, look, I'm, I'm finishing this thing. Just, just stick with me. Get your mind engaged because I'm going a little deeper. My text was Proverbs 25. And I want to go a little deeper now. Joseph, now watch me. He's in prison and the guy didn't remember him. But eventually Pharaoh had a dream and you know the story. I don't have time to read but I want to give you some things. So now Pharaoh had a dream. The butler remembers. He, he reminds him. He said there was a guy in prison that can, can, can interpret dreams. So now he sends, he sends for, for Joseph. Now, now he sends for Joseph. The Bible says something that is not seen in English. But hear me good. It said, and Jake and Joseph shaved himself. Jewish men didn't used to shave. But remember I tell you there is a word within the word. So now Joseph goes before Pharaoh shaven. Oh, he's shaven. Watch me. I'm going somewhere. Shaven. He now looks more like an Egyptian than he looks like a Hebrew. <laughs> yes. Because God could hide your savior in something that your doctrine don't see. I need to say it again. <laughs> because he hides a word within the word. So that those who like in Gideon army. Who will only lap. Will be left out. And those who are diligent. Who will drink with watching. Who will drink and watch. Who will watch and pray. Will see. So, jo so Joseph emerges. Like an Egyptian. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. And now. So when he interprets the dream. I'm skipping, but when he interprets the dream, Pharaoh does something that most of us will say, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I so move that you excommunicate Joseph. Because now Joseph is wearing a ring. <laughs> oh God, yes. Yes, no, no, no. And, 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 and I know you can't do me anything because I'm, you cannot take a divine eraser and erase the text. He took the signet ring which represents his power. And he put it on Joseph. And, and, and not only did he put the ring on Joseph, he put necklace around his neck. And he gave it. Wait a minute, preacher. How can God, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I want to raise a motion. Let there be order in this church board because I am seeing something that my book never showed me. I have read the law and the testimony and if you speak not according to this word, there is no light in you. But how come God is in charge of Joseph and he allows Joseph to take a woman? <laughs> Her name is Asenath. Why are you so silent? You know where I'm going. You're sensing where I'm going and it's troubling your spirit because this is a word within the word. Because you see the scripture this way and God is coming behind your back. And if you're hooked on a normal thing, you will not see God is working through this situation. Joseph now. Uh, uh, by the way, the text said that we shouldn't be unequally yoked, Mr. Chairman. And I know that is the word of God and I'm standing on this promise but God. Are you following this preacher where I'm going with this thing? <laughs> but, but God. Now, I'm quoting text and I'm quoting scripture. And I'm being truthful. But God. God who is not handcuffed to a text. God who is not handcuffed to your interpretation now. But a God who sits in charge of this church. And can decide in every moment what. Oh, man. God says, listen. Asenath Pania. Asenath, sorry. The daughter of Potiphar, she was, a, she was an idol worshiper. If you study the scripture, why did God, I must ask him, why, why, why did you give Joseph, who represents Jesus, a bride that is not an Adventist? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Why did you sanction it? And I know you sanctioned it because very soon after you brought fruit out of them. Are you with me, church? No, no, no. Now follow me now. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. I want you to get this point because I'm preaching from the subject. I defy all homiletic principles. Now my subject is entitled Conceal Reveal. <laughs> I'm saying it in the middle. <laughs> Conceal Reveal. Now, Joseph, watch me, watch me. Joseph is now talking like an Egyptian. And we always like an Egyptian to sin. So Joseph talks like an Egyptian. And I know he was talking Egyptian because when his brothers came down, he had to have an interpreter. Are you with me, church? So now he's talking like an Egyptian. He has a woman. He has a woman that is not a Jew or Hebrew. He, this woman is, is, is an idol worshiper. And he has two sons, Ephraim and Mesasa. So they were half-breeds. Are you with me, church? Let me ask this church a question. Was Joseph chosen by God? Was Joseph God's man for the time? Did Joseph look exactly like the church manual? You see, you're afraid to answer because you feel the person next to you. Just answer the word. Mm? Did it just look like? Do you get the point that this preacher is making? Joseph doesn't look like, yet he's God's man for the job. He's not married different. He talks different. He's wearing jewelry. <laughs> Joseph now is ascended at the right hand of Pharaoh, which represented Jesus at the right hand of God. He was called Zephanas Panea, which means he's the man with the bread of life. That is why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Beth in Hebrew is house. Lehem is bread. And a bread must be born in a bakery. Jesus was the, is, is the exegesis of God. It's the explanation of God. When he showed up, he gone. Bethlehem. Joseph is a type of him. And so Joseph, no, no, no. Let me just put another caveat to that text. And the reason why I think now, as a, as a, as a scholar of the word, the reason why I think that God gave him Joseph, which represents Jesus, a bride that didn't belong to the church, is because God wants us to know that when he has chosen us, when he has chosen this bride, when he has chosen this church, it's because not that you good, and because not that you belong, not that you're so nice, no, no, no. It's because he wants to do you a favor hence the reason why he has married you but the truth is you behave like a whore and it has nothing to do with whether Joseph took a woman out of church it has to do all with a Jesus that just love us it just love us she said let me give you a chance to come into the kingdom so I'll marry you so now watch me church now Joseph looks like an Egyptian Sounds like an Egyptian. And now there is famine. Watch me. Here is where I transition into another point. Are you still with me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Joseph now is bought. He's now in charge of the whole of Egypt. His wisdom is being used. But he speaks like an Egyptian. He spent more, so much years. Mothers and fathers, I want to make a point. And I made it last night. I'll say it again. Even when you lost your children... And you saw evidence by a coat, a sheep, a skin of an animal that suggests that your son or your daughter is dead. I want to tell you that God will allow your child to be in a pit, even in prison. But your prayers will cause that child to emerge in glory. Trust me, folks. Trust me. I know your child right now is in prison. What prison of drugs, prison of sex, prison of pornography, all kind of prison. I know right now you're praying. You have had many weeks of prayer. You have called many pastors. But I just want to tell a mother or a father in this house, just keep on praying. Because one day, just one day, that child will emerge in glory. Jacob thought that his son was dead, but that son was alive because God will preserve, God will preserve the fruit of your womb. Trust me on that. You, watch me, watch me. Let me tell fathers and mothers, because as a parent myself, God didn't give you no child to be firewood for hell. 
When you walk that child up this altar and the pastor rests his hand and pray, you must know that that moment you have sanctified that child. And even though he may seem lost to you, the God who is the boss inside, he's training your child to be resurrected at the right hand of you. Wait a minute. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Let me talk to the choir. These young people. Eh? Hear this. Some people think they quote LNG White, right? And they think, oh, you know, Christians shouldn't get involved with politics. But what I notice with God, the reason why he put Joseph next to the king, which represents a political system, because he has some brothers to save down the road. Sometimes God will position people in church in powerful position with political power so that when there is famine in the land, God could give you bread. So stop talking about people that you see that are strategically placed. God is just setting them up so that when you come with your hungry self, no maize and there is candle. There is sugar. Oh God, let me leave that alone. There is sugar for you to theft to get <laughs> because of the Josephs. Daniel was placed in the kingdom. Nehemiah was a cupbearer who drank the wine of the king so he could rebuild the kingdom. Stop talking about people who are strategically placed. They are there for us in the right time. In the right time. Don't make nobody intimidate you by where God has planted you to serve. You use that position, but trust me, let me make an announcement. When I come to your office, or your fellow Kenyans come to get a little bread, please give the church member some bread. <laughs> you, are not, you feel you there in that position as the chairman of this board and the CEO of this because of you? No, 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 no. God has placed you there so that when I come, Give me a little corn, please. But, but so many of us, we watch at our own members and we frown at them and we better be good to others. But the Bible said, it is good to do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. It doesn't matter how bad elder X is or sister Y. When they come, give them a little favor. Are you with me, church? Do you know, watch me, watch me, watch me. Do you know how powerful our church can be if we will cooperate? Oh God, this church have lawyers and doctors and judges and powerful people. You could imagine what will happen in Kenya if Adventists will come together strategically to pool their resources, even intellectually and positionally to affect this land. We will drive corruption and graft out because we are placed there. But the thing is, all of us are fighting in disparate places. And then fighting one another. Oh, this one is that, and this one is that, and this one. No, 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 no. And the reason why we are fighting, I told you the other night. Watch me, watch me. And I will say it again because I know some of you were not here. This is my last sermon, please. Just leave me, let me preach. C -c Could I just, Pastor, can I just preach, please? C Could I just, this is my last sermon. I, I said, when I was working in the hospital, I have seen orthopedic problems and I've seen pancreatic cancers and I've seen uh, all manner of diagnosis. But the disease that really bothered me so much as a practicing professional is autoimmune disease. It is one thing for, for a virus to come outside of me and infect my body. I might be able to fight it. But when my own body is fighting against my own when my own body is fighting against my own body, then the enemy don't even have to shoot a bullet. If we look at us, look at the people, I am sure there's this amount of power is inside this room right now. Mm? There's so much power inside this room. We shouldn't be renting no halls. We should, we should have hotels, oh God. We should have places that people rent from us. We should be the head and not the tail. And, 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 and by the way, the reason why the Bible says we should be the head and not the tail, because it don't smell good by the tail. Joseph, let me see if I could bring this thing to a conclusion. Yes. Are you with me, sister? You're there with me. Huh? You're with me. Once you're with me, I'm good. 
Uh, please, just so Joseph, 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 looking like an Egyptian. He wears Egyptian clothes. He's there with the king Pharaoh in his political army, but he's there just to serve God. Watch me. So when the brothers got hungry, now the brothers got hungry. Jacob sent them to Egypt to bright corn. Now watch me. But Joseph needs to know if they have been changed. So when they came, remember, when they came to Joseph, they didn't know that it was Joseph. Hear me, church. It is very possible that Jesus could show up, but because he don't look like an Adventist, because he don't dress like one, and he's not eating like one, and he don't have on the same thing like one, we think it is not. But God says it's the glory of God to conceal a word within the word. He could conceal a deliverer that you, your, 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 your thinking cannot embrace because he eats like, no, no, that can't be God. Ellen White says that if you're preparing for translation, you will stop eating meat and he is eating meat and you'll be surprised to know that is the very one that God is using to bring. But our prejudice is the greatest enemy of our church growth because sometimes we are so prejudiced because we feel we can fit God within the box of our brain when God is bigger than us. Are you with me, church? So Joseph, that's look, I, I need to end this thing. I feel fire. Like Jeremiah, I want to stop, pastor. I want to stop preaching, but I feel like fire in my bones. I want to stop and go to this text. Now, let me see. So, so, the, so the brothers came, and I'm fire. The brothers came, and he, he got an interpreter to talk. And, and, and Joseph, Joseph, when he saw them, he was looking, looking for Benjamin because th th these tribes, <laughs> these tribes, yes, I said it. These tribes were separated by mothers, uh, Leah children and racial children. Racial children were of Jacob and they, they were Benjamin and Joseph and the, and the rest of them. He was looking for his, his Benjamin. He was looking. And Simeon uh, was misbehaving and he kept Simeon and he told him, go back. And then he, he tested them. Watch me, watch, watch, watch. He tested them by putting, you, you know, how God does things. Sometimes God bless you in a way that seems dishonest. <laughs> so because he gave him a test and I, I came to buy my corn and I was willing to pay for it. <laughs> you know, some of you make apologies for the blessings of God in your life. You came with your money, you came to pay. No problem. I'm not corrupt. I don't grease any hands. I came to pay. And then when you're going back, you notice you, you have the corn and you have your money. That's how God does it. Now watch me. I want to skip because of time and I want to go to a specific place. Watch something. When Joseph brought the brothers one time, he set them up in order of their birth. <laughs> they wanted to know how he knew. Set them up order of their birth and look at this in genesis 44 verse 34 43 verse 34 look at this quickly there's so much in this but uh, 34 it says genesis 43 34 and he took and he took and sent messes unto them from before him, but to Benjamin, mess was five times, five the number of grace, five times so much as of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. Don't look at Joseph, look at Jesus. When Joseph brought them down, he put them on the table. And he gave Benjamin, that tribe, he gave that tribe five times more than he gave the rest. But you know they were changed when they were drink, drank and were merry. If you could look at another tribesman eating as much food. Let me say it on this side because some of you are not getting the point. If you can look at Benjamin eating his meal five times more than you, and you can still say, hallelujah, that's when this church would have changed. 
Hmm? When you can look at another person more blessed than you and still drink and be merry what God has placed in front of you, it's an indication to Jesus that you have changed and Joseph never revealed himself until his brothers came together. God can never reveal himself in this church unless every tribe, unless every brother come together and sit on the table and eat together and say hallelujah. Unless and until he cannot reveal himself. So Joseph is hidden conceal reveal he's hidden in a clause he looked like he's not one of them he looked like but he's just waiting for the right moment when they can sit are you with me church I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to an end just now watch me and so chapter 45 chapter 45 for which my meditation came I just want to read it and then I'll close my text before you this morning it says then Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them and he stood by him and he cried cause every man to go out from me and there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren and he wept aloud and the Egyptians that were in the house of Pharaoh heard and Joseph said unto his brothers I am Joseph now I can reveal myself unto you. I have seen when I told you Benjamin should stay here and not go home. You said to me, Judah, Judah who cast Joseph in the pit, Judah who wanted profit from him, Judah said to him, no, 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 take me, take me. I am the tribe of Judah, but I can give my life for my brother Benjamin. It doesn't matter. I will give my life now for him. Then Joseph could have revealed himself and said, I am Joseph, thy brother. Is my father well? You are brothers once you come from the same father. Even though you are many sons, you are from one father and I need for you to come together. And God will not reveal himself as Joseph. Right now he's cloaked in this church and you can't see evidence of him. But he wants to reveal himself and say, I am Joseph, thy brother. But unless and until one tribe is willing to give his life, he say, imprison me instead. Because my father needs to know Benjamin is alive. Unless and until... That happens. God cannot reveal himself in this church. He said, I am Joseph, thy brother. Is your father well? Then I'm going to close my text. I am always never out of words, but I'm always out of time. So, so, so Joseph revealed himself. And they couldn't believe. Oh, there's so much richness in that text. He didn't mention their sins. He said, what you thought was meant for my evil, God meant it for good. <laughs> you, you know, what you think so that I, watch this, watch this. The last point I want to make is this point. Watch me, church. And be careful when a preacher say last. He has three more. But watch me. My last point is this. Watch me. Joseph went in a pit. Joseph went in Potiphar's house. Joseph went in prison. And all of that hell that Joseph went through, he said, God sent me here, not for me, but to preserve your life. That is grace, amazing grace. In other words, I am going through hell. I am the righteous one. I am the good one. And I am going through hell for you bastard self. You evil Judah. You evil Simeon. You jealous one. You, you, you is the one. Yes, because God loves the failing tribes. Yes. I'm weak, yes. I have a hot head and a hot temper, yes. I'm this and that, yes. But yet God sent Joseph to go through all that for me. And he gave the brothers the best in Goshen. He never mentioned their sins. He just lift them up. He gave them the best. Church, hear me good. 
God has called us for such a time like this. These passages in scripture, Paul says, is more relevant now than it was relevant then. Now it's a time for us to apply it in central church. I'm not going to pretend that God has not called me this week to talk to you. God has called me this week to talk to you. And unless and until we don't get together, there will be no I am. <laughs> I am that I am. I am there will be no revelation of God in this house until all the brothers come together and sit on one table and eat bread together and rejoice as we do and eat tilapia and ugali and drink orangoli mm. and all these things and drink, drink music and, and we have all of the tribes together eating and drinking in the house of God who can run like Kalenjin will run who are brain like Luo will think those who can do business like Kikuyus you know what I'm talking oh God. you know what I'm talking about but we'll all use our gift till we all come in the unity of the faith for the building up of the church God wants to use this church and I say unto you I want Jesus to show up and say, I am Joseph. If you will make up your mind in your own personal life that you want God to be revealed in his power and glory in this church and you will forgive your brothers and you will not bring up their sins and you will give them the best place to sleep and the best food to eat so that we can all get up from here and go to heaven. If you want to make a commitment in your own personal strife, it doesn't matter if you're Judah, if you're Zebulun, or if you're Isaac, you know that we are one Israel and you just want Israel to be saved. If you're such a one, could you stand to your feet, please? Did you stand to your feet, church? Amen. And amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. I just want to pray as you stand and then I hand over. I'm done. Father, I'm done. I've said what you want me to say. Now I leave the consequence to you, O oh God. But brethren, let's bow our heads and just close our eyes. Just bow our heads. I don't want you to think about the person next to you. I just want you to raise your hands to heaven if you are such. If you will commit to make this church a better place because you will love your brothers. Could you just raise your hand? You come from one father. You come from one father. But many children, put your hands down. God has seen our hands. Our eyes are closed and our heads bow. Let me pray. Oh, Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. Like a federal express mailman, I have delivered your mail. Now, oh God, I leave the consequence up to you. But I pray that you will bless the ministers in this church, the pastor, the junior pastors, all these elders and deacons, oh God. We are all brothers and we are all one. May you bless all of us with food. And even though Benjamin will have five more messes than I have, I can still drink and eat and be rejoicing with the gift that you have given me. May you bless your church and give us peace, oh God. In Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? amen. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon. That all is good. And all the times. Thank you so much for your patience. We are coming to the end of this very powerful, inspiring message. And I want to believe that each of us has been blessed. 
uh, we will dismiss for our lunch. But again, to remind you that the members of Nairobi Central Church to remain behind. Our visitors, we thank you so much for worshiping with us. Welcome next Sabbath. We'll be having Holy Communion to fellowship with us.